Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of The Final Bar. Filling in for David Keller, our Chief Market Strategist here at Stock Charts. My name is Grayson Rose. I am the Vice President of Operations here at Stock Charts. And it is fun to be here with you to fill in for Dave. I think we might have to make this a permanent thing. I might give him the boot, kick him off his own show. He's the flagship, but I don't know. I, I think this is too fun to pass up. I got uh, to do this more often. So anyways, no, Dave is out on vacation and uh, we've got a great lineup here filling in for him this week with Aaron Swenlin and myself and Greg Chanel and some others. And uh, it's just a, a blast to be with you here today. Of course, uh, hard to fill Dave's shoes, but I think I'm going to give it a shot today. We're going to have some fun looking at charts, going through a bit of my process, showing you what I do after the market closes every day. You know, when I think about uh, what I love seeing from Dave, things that, uh, that he does well, things that I respect so much and have learned a lot from, um, one of the things that comes to mind is routines and process. Dave talks a lot about process, talks a lot about how routines factor into his approach to the market. Uh, I feel exactly the same. The most important thing that I have as an investor, as a technician, uh, are my routines. Uh, I've, I've always said for years that uh, the way to succeed in the markets is to just have the discipline to stick to your routines day in and day out, week after week, month after month, year after year. That is what makes us successful as technicians, as investors, as traders, all of that. So with my time this week here filling in for Dave, what I wanted to do, like I said, was just kind of give you a sense of what I do after the market closes every day, give you a look into some of the routines that I go through, uh, some of the uh, the charts that I like to watch every single day. And this really is what I do every single day after the market closes. You're getting a look into my own personal process, uh, my own personal time. I like to carve off you know, half an hour or, uh, or even 60 minutes after the market closes every day, no meetings on the calendar, nothing. I'm just focused on reviewing my charts, going through my, my routines and sticking to that process. So it's going to be fun to have you uh, looking over my shoulder today as we go through what I like to do every day after the market closes. Now, let's get right into it because we got a ton to review, lots and lots of charts to throw up on the screen for you and, uh, and walk through today. First and foremost, I come to the members dashboard every day after the market closes. This is actually a page that I have up uh, really constantly throughout the day. This is, uh, is sort of my home for watching the markets, keeping an eye on what happens. You'll notice that I've actually customized this page uh, pretty heavily. So it might look similar to what you have, but it also might look a little bit different. This is, as you, uh, as you probably know, if you're a Stock Charts member, this is the first page that you see when you log in. Um, but I have customized this page specifically for how I want to watch the market. So you actually do have quite a few options for customizing this page up here with this little gears icon. You have some different options for adding uh, new rows, new data panels, modifying what each of these panels do. As you can see, you can hit this little more icon and, uh, and flip these around to different views. So a look into how I've set up my dashboard. Of course, I have the market overview in the middle, which is always there for everyone. That gives me a great snapshot of what the major indexes are doing, as well as bonds, commodities, cryptocurrencies, uh, all of that good stuff. Uh, but I love to keep an eye on that. That's kind of how I watch the market throughout the day, constantly uh, flipping over to this market overview panel to see what's going on. On a day like today, as you know, we've got uh, a bit of a mixed bag here with the Dow and the S&P 500 closing up, the NASDAQ, the NYC uh, closing down. A little bit of, uh, of weakness that we're, we're seeing here in mid caps and small caps. I can see that right here with the S&P 600 and the S&P 400. Uh, but again, some of the big players coming back into the market. Uh, it's been interesting to see, especially those, those FANG names that everyone loves to talk about. Uh, the S&P 100 actually closing up. A lot of those FANG names coming back into play uh, and the VIX uh, down on the day as well. Finally getting below the 20s. We're going to actually pull up some charts of that in a little bit. But point is, I can see all of that at a quick glance. I can flip through these little mini charts uh, to see exactly what's happening. And again, you know, on a day like today, we've been making new highs. The market has been strong. We saw a little bit of, uh, of weakness last month, but historically, April being a strong month, we're off to a strong start here, making new highs across the board yesterday. That was great to see. Uh, so not a, a, a huge surprise to see a little bit of choppiness in the, uh, in the major indexes uh, today, kind of following up on the, uh, the strong day that we had yesterday. So anyways, I've got the market overview there in the middle. Uh, the next thing that I love to look at is the sector summary. I want to start at the top of the market and drill down as I'm going through it. 
you'll see exactly how I do that with some of my chart lists. We're going to take a look at, uh, like I said, some of those charts that I look at every day. Uh, but I have personally set up the sector summary. I've selected that from this menu here. I've got the sector summary right there next to my market overview. So at a quick glance, I can see what's happening in the major indexes in the equity markets, but I can also look right over here to get a summary of what's going on across those, uh, those major S&P sectors. So, you know, interesting to see, we can, uh, we'll, we'll have this sorted by percent change to start. Um, interesting to see communication services and technology leading the way today. Um, technology, especially, you know, a, a sector that's been hit uh, pretty aggressively in the last month or so, but starting to see uh, a little bit of uh, rotation back into technology and some of those higher growth names. Uh, materials and industrials, uh, two of the big laggards today, especially materials, uh, two sectors though that have been pretty strong. We've, uh, we've seen financials, industrials, materials, energy, some of those sectors actually leading the way. It's gonna show you how I track that actually with a chart list where I'm using the scooters to track what's, uh, what's strongest. But uh, today we are seeing communication services, technology, financials, energy, and real estate all up on the day with all of the other sectors closing in the red. So anyways, I've got my sector summary there. And then from there, I can dig into uh, some of the individual stocks that are moving the market because I've personally set up the S&P 500 market movers. I've selected the most active uh, tab there. I can flip back and forth though, between what's closing up, biggest gainers on the day, what's closing down, biggest laggards on the day. I like to keep that though on the most active tab. Uh, but I've set up personally the S&P 500 market movers panel, what we call the market movers here, which gives me a sense of stocks that are uh, that are moving uh, on the day, what's really kind of moving the markets. Uh, then I have the S&P 400 next to that. So we've got large caps and then we've got mid caps. I like to track those. And then right next to that, I've got the uh, the ticker cloud, which shows you some of the most popular symbols on stock charts. So a quick window into kind of how I've set up my dashboard. Uh, this really is, like I said, what I like to watch on a daily basis. It's uh, It's sort of something that I keep an eye on during the day. But I mentioned I was going to take you through some of the chart lists that I look at and specifically uh, the charts within. So the next step up after the market closes, after I sort of give a, a quick sweep of all the panels here on my dashboard, I go up to the top of the page, I click this chart list button, I scroll down and we actually did an episode of uh, Stock Charts in Focus, which is our product focus show on Stock Charts TV that I host every Friday. We did an episode of that show a couple of weeks ago, kind of going through how I organize my chart lists. Uh, so you can go back and find that recent episode. Uh, I think it was in the within the last couple of weeks, three weeks or so. Uh, but I talked through exactly how I organize my chart lists. Like I said, routines and process incredibly important to me. So you can see that I've actually organized my chart lists into uh, specific buckets sort of based on my routine. So I've got all of my chart lists here up at the top for my weekly routines. Uh, these are all of the chart lists that I go through every weekend as part of my sort of weekly uh, portfolio review market analysis process. And because I've organized them here at the top, it makes it really, really easy to get into those. I have a similar structure for my daily routines, which is what we're going to walk through today, uh, going through all of the different charts that I want to watch every single day after the market closes. A lot of these I also watch during the day as well. A lot of them are intraday charts, so I can watch those during the day. Uh, usually when the market opens, I'm, uh, I'm up in the morning, I'm watching those charts. And then when the market closes, uh, I can also track them as well. So uh, because I've created this structure to my account, it makes it really easy to flip through all of these charts and makes it really easy to go through my daily or my weekly routines, as you will see. So what we're going to do today is jump into uh, this block here, the daily block, and I'm going to walk you through exactly what I look at on a daily basis. So we're going to jump over to my daily market evaluation list, the first one up that I like to look at. I personally use Sharp Charts for a lot of my market analysis stuff. Uh, and more and more, I'm using ACP, our new interactive uh, advanced charting platform for my stock analysis. So when I get down to the individual stock level, we'll show that at the end of the show, I actually use um, a lot of, uh, of the ACP charts for those individual stocks. But for my market analysis stuff, I love to use Sharp Charts. I've got it all set up, neatly organized in, uh, in these different chart lists with the 10 per page view, makes it really easy to scroll through these charts slowly annotate them and just kind of watch the markets develop over time. 
Uh, a lot of these are, are carefully crafted and I'm looking at specific timeframes. I want to look at a six month chart, a one year chart, a two year chart, whatever it may be. Uh, so using sharp charts and this 10 per page view makes it really easy to set up all those charts and then scroll through this on a daily basis. So now that I've kind of explained the structure to you, uh, we are going to run through all of these charts and I'll share with you what I am personally seeing in the markets right now. First up in my daily market evaluation list, again, something that I look at in the mornings and then also after the market closes, I have uh, starting right from the top, I have this uh, intermarket analysis inspired by John Murphy. We have a whole bunch of different markets on this chart. So the blue line, we have VTI, that's representing the total US stock market. In the red line, we have the, uh, the long bonds ETF. In the gold line, we have gold, makes sense. The green line is the US dollar, the orange line is commodities, and the black line here at the top is oil. So what we can see here is across a whole bunch of different markets, looking back over a six month time frame, what is leading. Now, on a rolling six month basis, we've seen a lot of strength out of oil, we've seen a lot of strength out of commodities. Uh, but because I have some ratio charts down below, we can actually see that that strength has been weakening in recent months. So in this blue line here, we can see the blue line that is, like I said, the total US stock market stocks continuing to move higher while commodities have actually been uh, been putting in lower highs. Uh, same with oil, we can see that line trending down. Down below this, this, you know, again, gives me a sense of kind of what the different markets are doing. Uh, from an intermarket perspective, gives me a sense of uh, a sort of where money is, uh, is, is in favor, um, and which markets uh, investors are, are not favoring as much. When we scroll down here, though, uh, you know, specifically the intermarket relationships are what we really want to look at. Uh, so in these three ratio charts, we have bonds versus stocks, we have gold versus stocks, and we have commodities versus stocks. When I look at this chart, it is very, very clear that bonds are severely lagging stocks, gold severely lagging stocks. And while commodities have been in favor over stocks, we're seeing that relationship start to break down now, uh, stocks actually leading commodities as well. So what I'm trying to do with this chart is, is say, where should my money be? What are the markets telling me uh, is, is currently in favor? And when I look at these, uh, these ratios specifically, it's clear that stocks are still in favor. We're seeing stocks really outperforming heavily, uh, especially on a near-term basis, sort of from, uh, from mid-March to now. So the intermarket view is one that I look at. Next up, I like to dive into a look at some of the global market uh, ETF. So for this chart, I use three specific ETFs. This is the Vanguard Total World, that's VT. I have the total US stock market, that's VTI. And then the total international index, which is everything in the world minus the US. So three sort of global market representative ETFs that I have on one chart, we can see all of them moving higher, very, very nice movement here. Uh, again, this is a six month chart. And this is a little bit different because this is a performance chart. So I'm not into the uh, the candlesticks on some of these charts as much what I'm actually looking at is just how have we been moving? Are we going up, down? And what sort of percentage gains have we been putting in uh, across some of these different indexes? So on this one, what we can see is that these are, are tracking quite similarly, tracking together uh, the total world, the total US, and the total international minus the US, uh, all moving higher overall. We can dig into the ratio charts, though, again, and say, OK, the US stock market versus the total world, which one is really outperforming? What we can see clearly here is that there has been a bit of a reversal uh, in 2021 to head into sort of the uh, the back part of 2020. Um, when we were looking at the back half of uh, or back few months of, of 2020, uh, we can see that actually the total U.S. stock market was underperforming the total world. When this line is moving lower, that means that the U.S. is underperforming the total world. When this line is moving higher, that means that the U.S. is outperforming the total world. We've seen a reversal of that in 2021. Uh, again, sort of breaking that downtrend, we're seeing now with this line moving higher, we're seeing the US stock market outperform the total world. Uh, we're also seeing the US market outperform that total international index. So clearly the US, a strong place to be, all three of these moving higher, but the strongest of the bunch is the US stock market. So I like to look at that. I then uh, dig into developed versus emerging markets, a very similar structure here. We have the two on a percentage scale. Um, we can see that uh, emerging markets really have gotten hit um, in the last two months or so. Uh, we've actually seen a, a bit of weakness coming out of there. 
that was a strong story, especially with the, uh, the strength out of commodities. But we are seeing that, uh, that ratio turn lower, which means that the developed world is now uh, pretty firmly outpacing the emerging markets. Um, so an interesting note there. Uh, again, another chart that I look at on a daily basis. I dig into the US market a little bit from there. We're looking at different market cap ETFs. So here we have the, uh, the Vanguard total market. That is, like I said, the total US stock market. That is the black line. We have large caps in blue with the S&P 500. We have mid caps in green with the S&P 400. Small caps in red with the S&P 600. And then the micro cap ETF as well in orange. So what we can see is that on a rolling six month basis, it's really kind of gone down the uh, gone down the line. Micro caps have been leading small caps. Small caps have been leading mid caps, and mid caps have been leading uh, the uh, the large caps there in uh, in blue. However, again, we've seen some of these ratios start to actually roll over. So overall, over the last six months, we've seen a lot of strength out of the smaller cap names. But we're seeing that start to change a little bit. We're seeing some of these ratios roll over. So what we're looking at here in these bottom three panels is mid caps versus large caps, small caps versus large caps, and micro caps versus large caps. Again, with these ratios starting to point lower, that means that large caps coming into, into favor. Again, we're seeing a, a bit of a reset to these ratios. Now, we have seen a lot of strength coming out of mid caps and small caps and micro caps for quite some time. So to me, this is more of a healthy reset for some of these ratios. I don't think this is a sign that we are going to be uh, sort of permanently rotating away from small caps. I've been quite excited actually about the strength that we've seen out of small caps and mid caps, uh, especially small caps, a group that has really underperformed for the last couple of years. It's been a large cap story for so long, especially large cap tech and high growth. Um, so I've been thrilled to see some of that strength out of, uh, out of small caps and mid caps as well. I think that we are just kind of taking a breather after a healthy run higher. We're actually going to dig into some charts here in just a minute uh, of those specifically. Uh, but we are seeing a bit of uh, a bit of favoring of large caps coming back into this market with these three ratios uh, moving lower. Next up, I look at market factors. Um, so this is a, an interesting stack of charts here. We've got high dividend yielders in blue. Uh, we've got value in red, growth in green, and then the standard S&P 500 there in the gray line. Now, again, we've seen a lot of uh, strength coming out of value, um, a bit of a, a hit to growth. That's been a big story in the last couple of months. But if we zoom this chart back, when I think about here, we have actually the um, growth versus value ratio. You can see that this has been moving lower. We've seen value heavily outperforming growth. But that is, again, starting to reverse. We're seeing a little bit of favoring of large caps coming back in. We're also seeing growth actually start to take back over. And when we zoom this out, if we made this more of like a two-year chart, we'll see one at the very end of this list uh, that gives you a good sense of this. But if we made this a two-year chart, really what we've seen is growth takes such a leap ahead of value uh, that, that started to pull back. We saw value come back into play, a bit of rotation into some of those value names. Um, but to me, again, that was kind of more of a reset after a long run uh, in outperformance and growth. Um, so we'll show that off with an S&P 500 chart at the, uh, at the end of this list. Um, but I think this is kind of a, a nice reset. Um, we've seen value come back in. Now we're seeing growth actually start to outperform a little bit. So I'm, I'm watching this, uh, this ratio quite carefully. We've got high dividend yielders, which have been outperforming the S&P 500, starting to lose a little bit of that grip. So I'm watching that carefully. And then a few other ratios on this chart. Momentum versus the S&P 500. A bit of a similar story. We saw momentum get really, really hit quite aggressively. That ratio plummeted. Uh, really earlier this year, kind of February and March, we saw momentum really get slammed, but uh, found a bit of a bottom and has actually been moving higher now. So I'm watching that uh, that momentum factor ETF MTUM versus S&P 500, uh, watching that kind of come back into favor a little bit. Finally, we have quality versus the S&P 500 and then high beta versus low volatility. Uh, interesting to watch these two as well. We're going to fly past these because we're, uh, we're short on time. I wish this was a two-hour show. Maybe we got to make this a two-hour show, but uh, you know, we only got half an hour, so we're flying through these charts, I know, pretty quickly. Next up, I look at market cap factors, what I call market cap factors. So similar concept, we've got growth versus value versus sort of the, uh, the blend with the standard index uh, for large caps, mid caps, and small caps. Here in blue, we have the uh, sort of the blend, the standard index, the S&P 500. We have the value corner of that index in red, and we have the growth corner of that index in green. 
So for each of these, I can look at what's outperforming. Again, we've seen a lot of rotation into value. Some of that's starting to change when we're looking at the growth versus value specifically. Uh, but this chart gives me a sense of for each of these uh, different cap tiers, large caps, mid caps here with the S&P 400 and small caps here with the S&P 600, I can actually get a sense of uh, sort of growth versus value at, a, uh, at the next tier down, uh, looking at those different cap levels specifically. So another one that I like to look at. Now, Dave talks a lot about Dow theory. I know he covers this quite a bit. So I have two Dow theory charts in my market evaluation list. This is the uh, industrial, the standard classic Dow theory uh, look, industrials and transports, the Dow industrials and the Dow transports. I've got both of those again on that sort of percentage um, percentage view. We can see both moving higher. I actually do include some, uh, some candlesticks in these charts as well. So I can get a look at exactly how those two indexes are performing. With both of these moving higher, that is great to see. It gives me a lot of confidence in this market. I do have a ratio here of uh, the Dow Industrials versus the Dow Transports. Uh, interesting to see the uh, the transports really leading with this market, this uh, this ratio moving lower. Uh, but both moving higher, that's what you want to see uh, from the sort of classic Dow theory move. It gives me a lot of confidence in this bull market. Below that, I do have a new Dow theory list, which is the S and P 500 uh, and the Nasdaq. So very very similar. We are seeing a little bit of a difference here, though. Uh, the S&P 500 moving up to new highs, but as we know, the NASDAQ has been struggling. So I want to see that continue to, uh, to come back a little bit. We are seeing the NASDAQ, if we drew a trend line here, we've actually got that on a chart that we uh, will hopefully get to later in the show. But if we drew a trend line down here, we have seen the NASDAQ break its near-term downtrend, which is great to see. I want to see us continue to move higher, though, on that important index uh, for this to be really confirmed on sort of the uh, the new Dow theory view. Next up, I look at advancers and decliners. So here on the top panel, we could look at the percentage of stocks in the NYSE that are advancing and the percentage that are declining on each specific day. I've also got the uh, the classic look with just the 50 and the 200 day, a very, very clean look at this index. You can see that when I think about the NYSE, I think about an index that has just been bouncing along its rising 50 day moving average, the red line there. Um, specifically on it, on every day, I want to look at uh, what percentage of stocks in that index are advancing, what percentage are declining. Uh, today, we had about 59% of the index declining, um, but a bit of a flat day. So not too concerned about that. I have the same chart for the NASDAQ. So we can see actually 71% of the NASDAQ declining today, a bit weak, uh, but overall a bit of a flat day, uh, not, uh, not too big of a hit. So not too concerned about that. Is nice to see the NASDAQ above its 50 day. I love the, uh, the simple view on this chart is, uh, is nice and clean. Uh, but this is another one that I watch uh, every day looking at advancers and decliners for those two important indexes. Next up on the next page, we've got the VIX. The VIX has struggled to stay meaningfully below 20. We're seeing that finally taking over with the VIX now trading around 17. So uh, a lot of technicians have been watching that level very, very closely really since the uh, the big decline that we saw last year, uh, last March. So I'm thrilled to see the VIX finally moving below 20 in a meaningful way. Uh, we'll see if that can hold. We'll see uh, where we go from here. Uh, but sort of the beginnings of uh, sort of a back to normal type of phase here for the VIX, something that I know a lot of us are watching carefully with the VIX there at 17. But uh, one of the next charts in my, uh, my daily list is that VIX chart. I've got a multi-factor momentum chart, which is just a sort of a fun one to keep an eye on. Um, basically, at, uh, at those different cap tiers, I've got momentum factor ETFs uh, versus the S&P 500 specifically. Oh, give it a click there. Um, so I, I watch this and then a couple of different uh, sectors as well. So we've got technology and consumer staples, consumer cyclicals or, or discretionary and utilities as well, looking at sort of momentum for those different sectors. Uh, so an interesting chart that I like to watch on, the, on a daily basis as well. Growth versus, uh, or excuse me, offense versus defense, uh, an important set of ratios that I watch carefully here. Uh, this is consumer discretionary versus consumer staples. We have seen this struggling to continue moving higher. It is moving higher overall, but struggling as of late. Uh, when consumer discretionary is outperforming, this ratio is moving higher. That means the market is favoring offense. When consumer staples are moving, uh, moving higher, outperforming, that means that defense is sort of favored in the market and this ratio will start to move lower. So uh, a bit choppy here. We are seeing a lot of chop on this ratio. Now the knock against this is that it is a cap weighted ratio because both of these ETFs are cap weighted. So we can also look at this in an equal weight flavor. 
that ratio looks a little bit better when we look at this offense versus defense ratio on an equal weight flavor, uh, which is what this purple line is, the equal weight version of those two sectors. We are seeing that hold up a little bit better, um, but still not back at new highs, moving higher overall, um, but I'd love to see that continue to find its way to new highs, signaling that the market is favoring offense. Now, I do also look at technology versus utilities as a sign of offense versus defense. Again, moving higher overall, but struggling a little bit to, to, uh, to stay, um, you know, finding its way up to new highs. Uh, also, I look at biotech versus healthcare. Biotech, a bit more of an offensive sector of the healthcare industry, uh, of the healthcare sector. Um, so when this ratio is moving higher, that's a sign of offense in the market. This ratio has been getting hit. So that's uh, definitely a, a sign of weakness to me. Uh, a little point of concern there on my offense versus defense charts. Next up, I look at breadth. I know we're flying through these charts real quick, but I look at breadth across the NYSE, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. A lot of stocks above their 200-day still. Uh, we are seeing good numbers on of stocks above their 50-day on the NYSE, which is the blue line, and the S&P 500, which is the green line. But the NASDAQ has definitely been a weak point across these breadth charts. The, uh, the overall, the cumulative advanced decline line still moving higher, which gives me a lot of confidence, but I do want to see the breadth improve on the NASDAQ. We're seeing a lot of NASDAQ stocks lose their 50-day moving average, which is definitely a concern for me. Now, I also look at the S&P 1500, new highs minus new lows, the percent um, on a cumulative chart. So to see this moving higher is great. We're seeing more stocks making new highs than new lows, which I love to see, a sign of strength in the market. Uh, and then as we continue to scroll down here, a bit of a positioning chart. So we're looking at the equity only put call ratio, staying firmly in what a lot of us call the complacent zone. When that's below about 0 0.5, 0 0.55, uh, that means that investors, traders are, are just kind of complacently buying calls. Um, so I actually would love to see this ratio make its way back up into sort of the neutral zone, a little bit more balance if we can do that. I also look at the... Um, at the NAA IM uh, exposure index, which basically looks at active managers and how much exposure they have on the long side to the market. So sitting around 50 uh, indicates that some of the active managers are a little bit hesitant uh, to put money to work in this market. Uh, we can see when this, is, uh, when this is strong, things are a lot better. So with that sitting around 50, that is a little bit of a concern to me. So we've got traders uh, a little too complacent and money managers um, a little bit cautious. That's an interesting blend there. Next up, I look at interest rates. Uh, a lot of a uh, lot of attention drawn to this as well. Uh, I also have the S and P 500 yield on here, so I want to really compare that to some of these rates. We're seeing uh, the uh, the 10 year and the 30 year finally both back above S and P 500 yields, but really does give you a sense of kind of the lows that those have been coming off of. Finally, I mentioned this before, this is what I call my ultimate S&P 500 chart. Uh, and this actually uh, gives you a lot of these ratios that we've already looked at kind of in one specific place. So a little bit of breadth, we've got our offense versus defense, our growth versus value. Again, kind of a clean look at the index here with just the 50 and then the 200 is that green area, uh, but shows you kind of where we are. Um, so a lot, of, uh, a lot of those ratios that we've already looked at all stacked on this one chart. Now, we are running out of time. There's been so much to cover. Uh, but the next thing that I do look at, I actually drive it, dive into the global equities. Then I go into the US equities. So a lot of different charts uh, for each of those. They look like this. I'll give you a sense of, uh, of what one of them looks like. Uh, but just to, to sort of let you know, from there, I dive into the global equities and the US equities. Uh, and I look at each of those specifically. Um, the, the main one, the most important one um, to me in a lot of ways is VTI, again, that Vanguard Total Market Index. Uh, so to see this continuing to make its way to new highs, trading nicely above its 20 and its 50-day moving average uh, is, is great. So anyways, a little look into my process here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have more time in the show to dive into all of these charts, but this gives you a sense of what I do on a daily basis. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you've had some fun with me today, looking at charts, looking at my process. My name is Grayson Rose. Thank you for having me. And I'll join you back again soon for the final bar. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.